Hey guys and welcome back to another video here on Motorsport Madness and today we have once again another Tiger Florio challenge. This time we are sort of on the same lines of the last attempt which was with the Ferrari 330. This time we have its competitor the Ford GT40. Probably one of the most iconic cars of all time. Everyone knows what a GT40 looks like even if you show it to someone who's not even interested in motorsport at all they know what a Ford GT40 looks like it's just such an iconic and beautiful car it you know it won Le Mans a couple of times it's just such a good car it looks good it sounds good and it's quick now will it do well on the Targa Floro? We don't know and that's what we're here to do so obviously if you've been following me for a little while you will have seen we do every now and then a Targa Floro challenge in different cars. We actually started out in the 1906 Renault <laughs> which took over an hour and then since then it's been slowly getting faster and faster and faster until we'll get to uh, like sports cars of the 1970s that will be interesting and we will get to that and uh, until then, we are slowly working our way towards that. Last time we were in the Ferrari 330, we got a decent time. But will the Ford GT40 beat it? I'm not too sure. It behaves a lot differently from the Ferrari. You know, you need to really look after this car, go around here. I've done it once before, um, didn't end well, got about halfway, crashed, and yeah, ruined the entire run. Um, so I'm going to take it a little bit cautiously today just to get this thing around and um, <clears throat> I'm sure we're in for a good ride. There's a few topics I want to talk about as well as I kind of use this um, Tiger Flora video to really sort of talk to you. Uh, I don't really do that that often when, when I'm doing my regular videos but um, yeah I think yeah that's pretty much the intro. So, Let's just get started with the uh, Ford GT40 Targa Florio. Let's get into this. Okay then, here we are on the start line. The famous Targa Florio banner is there. Ready for our attempt. 50 miles, pretty much. And whew, I'm a little bit nervous for this one. Because like I said, I've attempted this before. Didn't go too well. Uh, but we've got quite low conditions, it's um, about half seven in the evening. Uh, even in real life right now, it's um, it's uh, about that time, I think. <laughs> so, um, yeah, this is pretty much true to life. So, um, shall we get on with it? I think we should. Right, let's go. So we've got, yeah, okay. So it adds, well, subtract about two and a half minutes away from our time. Because it counted the time that I was on the start line for some reason. I'm pretty sure I never used to do that. Okay. So a lot of the time we've spent between first and second on this track. So I did the um, first bit just before recording as a little bit of a practice session and most of the time between first and second but so far so good I do expect this thing to be somewhat battered by the end <laughs> But of course this car was somewhat popularised by the film Le Mans 66 or, oh no, every time. But um, yeah, it's featured in many pop culture films and TV shows, it's just such an iconic car. And the first sort of time I really sort of fell in love with it was watching uh, Le Mans 66 or whatever it's called in your region. Some people call it Ford versus Ferrari um, or whatever it's called. I can't actually remember but um, obviously it's featured heavily in that film. Pretty much the premise of that film 
is the development of the Ford GT40 and the rivalry between this and Ferrari obviously hence the title and I kind of fell in love with it then uh, oh, oh no that's bad that's bad that felt bad okay I don't think there's any damage I don't think does it feel like there is but we took a bit of a whack there but oh well we're still going but yeah I remember because I was on a work trip when I watched it in cinema for the first time well, when I came back home I instantly sort of loaded up Forza as that was kind of the only game I had at the time and uh, I just loved it driving around Le Mans in this car and here I am a couple of years later in VR with a sim rig well ish so, uh, and um, driving around Targa Floro one of the most difficult <laughs> racing circuits out there All right, let's take it gently through here it's a very narrow and tight section Got to second. <clears throat> yes, all right, I get it. This this car also does struggle using the um, gear shifter. I know, notice the Porsche 07 is like that as well. A lot of times, just won't change gear when you want it to. So I'm also having to think about that as well. Ooh, we. See, I took that corner perfectly in practice. But now you think I don't know how to take that corner. Oh, come on. Right now, down this very fast street, probably my favourite part of the entire course, flying past all these houses at ridiculous speed. Be interested to see what sort of time we get as well. Gonna take it easy through here. Very easy to get it wrong through here. So I have many, 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 many times. Okay. And break. Heavy braking. Heavy. We're fine, we're fine. I didn't panic one bit. Oh, come on, you changed gear then. But this corner is always funny. It's always, it's a lot tighter than what you initially think. And this one as well. Yeah, don't mind that, it's just a little barrier. It's fine. But look at the beautiful views over there if you can see it. I know you can't see everything I'm seeing, but there well, you can imagine beautiful scenery as we're flying around the Sicilian countryside in a Ford GT40. Where am I going? Where am I going? On oh, this way. <laughs> it's a little bit hard to see in these weather conditions. Oh, that's a fun idea. Target Floro in the rain. Yeah, that's not going to happen for a while. Ooh. For once I've got that corner right. I'm so happy. That means we're in for good luck. I should have really checked the um, uh, the time of the, um, the Ferrari 330. I didn't check before doing this video. It's right, when we get to the starting line, I'll quickly get out my phone and have a look at that video and see what we did but yeah I've got a long list of cars ready for me to take on this challenge I'm really excited especially the next one the next one is going to be interesting but yeah we're going to do all the sort of fictional well all the cars that did take on the Target Flora in real life competitively 
and then take on cars that didn't. So like post 1973 sports cars, Formula One cars, anything, anything I can think of. Huh? Oh no! Ooh. Every time. I also just wanted to thank you guys. The last two videos have been really, really good. I've really enjoyed seeing your guys' support on that as I go into a barrier. There we go. It's aiding my cornering. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the views I got on the last two uploads, I'm really happy with, and I'm really happy to see you guys enjoying them. So, And they're really fun for me to make as well. As soon as that RSS Formula 70 came out, I was like, wow, I want to drive that. And I want to do a fresh video of me driving it for the first time, which didn't go, quite go to plan since I, um, oh dip, oh no, mm. you didn't see that, come on, but yeah, I wanted to do a fresh, first time impression, but then I messed up the upload, I completely ruined the audio, because that car is so loud, and I can hear myself well actually no that's a lie I couldn't really hear myself I should have known from them that you guys wouldn't be able to hear me <laughs> so I had to re-record everything again and I was really annoyed because I was hungry really wanted to make dinner and I was like for god's sake <laughs> Do have a handbrake, I believe. I could try and utilise that. But this ain't a rally car, so I shouldn't be treating it like one. And of course the awesome sounds of a set of Corsa. That was really fun to make. That kind of enabled me to just get into some random cars and just enjoy taking them around the track and take the clips from them and that was really fun to do and I'm really glad to see you guys are enjoying it as well and I know it's a couple of new subscribers so welcome we're a growing channel we always try and have fun and yeah there's gonna be a lot more content and I noticed one of you in particular you know exactly who you are <laughs> noticed that little teaser in the last couple of videos about what the next season of the historic F1 series will be. You know exactly who you are. And I honestly didn't expect anyone to notice that. Because I didn't think anyone like watches my videos throughout. And when I saw your comment, my <laughs> my first reaction was shit. <laughs> I've been found out. I was kind of annoyed at myself because I, w I did kind of want to cover it up, which I did in the second video, which was the awesome sounds video. And um, so I learnt my lesson. But yeah, I should have done it for that one as well. I was well annoyed myself. <laughs> but um, yes, that will be next season. There'll be a trailer. I'm not gonna say it out loud, just in case. There's some of you watching who haven't seen that video and don't know what it is. But, um, yeah, there'll be an announcement trailer sh shortly. Not during this video, obviously. But, um, there'll be a season highlights video from my perspective of last season, season one, 1950. And then sometime after that, there'll be the trailer for next season. But I've also got a few other videos that I've planned uh, to come out within the next week or two, which I'm really looking forward to doing. One of them I've had planned for a long time, and I've had to practice quite a lot because the car is really difficult, and the track can also be very difficult, and the other cars are also very difficult to race against. Change gear, thank you. Change gear please
But yeah, like I said, I'm really pleased to see you guys enjoying my latest content. It really does. Ooh, really does make me happy. Ooh. Relax. It's, we're fine. We're fine. It looks so calm and peaceful around here this time. It's beautiful. But yeah, I just want to say thank you. Thank you very much. I'm looking towards my microphone on my left. Thank you. It really does. I, I really do appreciate your support. As we're approaching 100 subscribers, which I never really th thought would be possible. You know, 100 of you. Well, nearly 100 at the time I'm talking. You know, enjoy watching me talk gibberish most of the time and driving cool cars around cool tracks. Never thought that was really possible, really. <laughs> so I just want to th say thank you. Thank you so much. Come on. And like I said, we're a growing channel. There's a few things I've got planned for it in the future. So that we can get bigger and better, and the videos will get better. I'll improve myself. Because I know I'm not quite where I want to be, personality wise. I know I want to. I'm a very sort of outgoing, positive person. And a lot of the time I don't feel like I sort of. What's the word? Show that on camera, on videos. And then hopefully I want to get to a point where my sort of off camera side starts to show on um, on these videos because that way it'll be a lot more entertaining because I know right now I'm probably about 10 10 percent away there but I guess that's that's the case with a lot of youtubers you know when it started out very sort of monotone didn't really show their true set the true selves until a lot later on and I think that's probably going to be the case here look at Jimmy Broadbent's first videos on YouTube and how different they are oh, come on to how they are now it's night and day well, I'm going to keep it in second for a little while because my right arm is getting <laughs> achy from changing gears so much Plus, I feel like we don't really need to. We're getting through these corners all right. It's not very loud. It's almost like I'm driving an electric car. Whoops. But yeah, once again, thank you. Thank you very much. And um, hopefully we can hit 100 subscribers soon. I've got a little something planned for it, but I'm not really too sure. I know for a lot of you out there thinking, oh, it's 100... That's nothing, but to me, it's something. Yeah, it does mean a lot to me. Just thinking that a hundred of you, some of you are not even in the same country as me, you know, subscribe to this channel, subscribe to me, to watch my videos and you find them entertaining. And that's. <laughs> blows my mind. Here's that bridge. You can easily get caught out here in that lovely pink VW camper over there. Which I've only just noticed. The moon. Change gear, please. Thank you. But so far, it's not gone too badly, has it? I haven't really gone off the track anywhere. I haven't smashed into anything properly. Maybe because I'm really trying hard not to do that. <laughs> and I say that, eh, it's not so bad. There's nothing we don't do all the time. <laughs> this really does feel like I'm just taking casual Sunday, Sunday, Sunday drive around some country roads aggressively. Because of the, you know, the dim light and how quiet it is. Might not be quiet for you, but obviously I'll turn the volume down so then you can hear me. 
But yeah, I've decided to do the awesome sounds video. Purely because I did enjoy doing the older content I did on when I first started this channel. They were really quick and easy to do, you know, just quickly do a few laps around the track and record the replay. And one of those, the Matra video, is my most popular video on this channel. It's got over 400 views at the time of this recording. And people just really liked it. And, uh, well, still do. And it made me think, you know, okay, people like this stuff. So I honestly didn't think they did, or you did. And, um... And I'll look at the audience retention that I can see, you can't. But um, most people are watching it throughout, and that made me think, okay, people like this stuff. And I enjoyed making those videos, so rather than just doing sort of one by one, let's do a compilation video titled The Best Sounds. So there's a lot of people out there that love car sounds. I mean, who doesn't? I don't know why I said it like that, but, um, but in video games, you don't really get good sounding cars sometimes. It's kind of a rarity. They just sound like generic cars. Unless you get something really distinct like a V10 Formula 1 car. But I mean, I think, let's just showcase, in my, my opinion, one of the best sounding cars in this game. And so far, it's doing really good. And I'm really glad to see you guys are enjoying it. Like I've said before. And, um. Yeah, wool. Change gear. Sorry, I will get back to what I was saying. This is a little bit of a tricky section. I can't really see. It's getting darker, isn't it? Getting a lot darker. Lamp post. But yeah, what was I saying? Yes. So I just decided to show off some of these mods. Because some of these really deserve a lot more attention than what they have got already. It's like that first car, the Ferrari 512S. Oh, it's a wonderful sounding car. Even driving that around Monza, the interior sounds were just so good. I was having so much fun just enjoying the sound that rather than the actual car itself. And it was just wonderful, it really was. You know, some of these cars that are featured might not be the best cars to drive. Ooh. But um they just sound so good, like the Formula the RSS Formula two thousand. That's such a tricky car to drive. In fact that clip that you saw in that video I think I took about six attempts to get a clean lap around Hockenheim because I kept losing it. It's just such a hard car to control. Where am I? But yeah, there will be an episode two. I would already plan to do an episode 2 because there's a lot of cars that I missed out that I wanted to include but I wanted to try and keep the um, video as short as possible. So there will be an episode 2 at some point, I'm not too sure when. Oi. Ow. Lovely hedge again. We should give it a name. Barry's Hedge. I like that. <laughs> Barry's Hedge. Let's call it Barry's Hedge. I don't know why Barry. I really don't know why that name automatically came into my head. Barry. Really? Change gear. Thank you. See what I mean? This car can really have trouble changing gear sometimes. I don't know whether it's me, but I'm doing it the same way I would do any other car. And every other car is fine and change the gear, but this one, for some reason, no. It just, a lot of time, 
I just won't change gear. Very tight corners coming up. We're currently on to sector three now, which I like to call, or stage three. And this is one of the longer ones. This is actually sector three where I crashed last time. In my first attempt at doing this off camera. And I know exactly where it, where it was, so I'm going to take it extra slow around there. Ooh. Oh no. I need a wee. <laughs> So this is not just a race to the line now, it's a race to the toilet. Come on. All these beautiful instruments lit up. It looks so good. This mod is so well done. It's an official um, Kunos car as well, so it's not like it's a third party mod or anything. So this is available with the game. But the other thing I wanted to talk about, um, just before watching the um, watching uh, recording this video, I watched a video on YouTube by Black Flags Matter, which is a very good channel actually, and it was talking. Uh, if I yeah, there we go. And it was talking about basically how F1 fans like to think they are the bee's knees, you know, that everyone who enjoys uh, any other motorsport are just, you know, don't know what they're talking about. And it got me thinking, my opinion on all this, now, I'm fairly new to motorsport, only in the last year um, or so have I really taken an interest to it. And and I could come into it thinking, you know, into F1 thinking, you know, all the fans got on. Uh, oh, shite. Are we fine? I think we are. Cool. But yeah, thinking, you know, all fans kind of got on way over each other. It's like, yeah, you supported that team, but doesn't matter. You can still sit next to whoever and it will be fine, you can have a great chat and whatever, but it does seem like that's just completely changed maybe? I don't know if it's always been like that, but from what I know it never has. So that this whole Hamilton and Verstappen fans going at each other's throats, which is just sad to see, like they're both incredible drivers, it doesn't need this aggression is sad and it made me think you know oh f1 fans and that's me included that's pretty obvious by the content i'm putting out on this channel and it made, it made me think like are most f1 fans like that do they really genuinely think they are the best in the world you know if you like indycar you're dirt if you like NASCAR, you're dirt. Stuff like that. Are they really that toxic? Now, it's 50-50, I think. You get, obviously, the drive to survive crowd, which is there, of course. I mean, that really has helped gain a lot more attention to Formula One, which it was intended to do. And, there's two ways about it. You can use Drive to Survive to improve your knowledge on F1 and from that sort of learn about the history of it and just build your interest up. But then there's the lot that just watch it for the entertainment value of it more than anything. Like you still don't know any of the drivers, still don't know the team's history, don't know the history of the sport or anything like that. And for me personally, Drive to Survive, I, I do enjoy that show. You get to see, you know, whether it's all dramatised or not, you still get to see the side of Formula 1 you don't normally get to see. 
and I'm all for that. And obviously the dramatisation, I think that needs to be, obviously, <laughs> calm down. Oh god, we're fine, we're fine, don't panic. But I kind of, it was my inter introduction to Formula One, because I was living with my mate who's a massive Formula One fan, and if you're watching, you don't know who you are. And he, at the time, was massively into football, and always have, always have done, still am. But we kind of had like that sort of Ooh, football's better, Formula One's better. But then I sort of allowed him to explain to me how Formula One worked. Because I had a very, very, very basic understanding of it. So I allowed him to talk to me how it all worked. And asked him a few questions like, okay, do teams get relegated? Are there different leagues? And that kind of thing. Are there points? You know, there's a championship? Oh, that's cool. And then I, he said, oh, there's a race this weekend. You can watch it with me. I thought, okay, I'll give it a go. And that was the 2021 Ooh, Spanish Grand Prix. Um, I had watched F1 races in the past before, but I only sort of had them in the background, never really watched them. And the only driver I knew was like Hamilton, Vettel, Schumacher, Raikkonen, that kind of lot. And, you know, I enjoyed it. And then he introduced me to Drive to Survive. He said, you know, this is really good. So I thought, okay, I'll watch it as well. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. And again, that just aided the interest that was building up in me. And from there, did a lot of research into history of the sport. I'm just, mm, sorry, ruined your house. And it just really did aid that building interest that was bubbling in me which was the same with football when I the team that I support I think I mentioned it Brighton Hove Albion when I first got into that you know I discovered its history and it's when you delve into history where I know I'm interested in this subject and you know and I kind of fell in, fell in love with that and started attending games and it's very similar to what happened with Formula my interest in well motorsport and you know, I got him to explain it, and then we watched Monaco, and I found it fascinating. Wow, they're racing on a street. That's, that's just incredible. And then, yeah, it just built up, and then I found out, obviously, about past drivers, like Jackie Stewart, Fran Joe, all the F1 in the 60s, Senna, all the greats, all the great moments, watching YouTube uh, top tens and all that. I just found it so fascinating, it just built from there and my knowledge and interest in the subject has gotten better and better and I joined, joined, well, started playing the Saturn Corsa, oh, I, I really hope that didn't damage my car, um, <laughs> what do we do, okay, slowly, 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 there we go. And yeah, my interest has got to where it is now, where it's not just Formula 1 I'm interested in, sports car and endurance racing, rallying, IndyCar, and that's probably about it. But again, with him, he doesn't really like any other forms of motorsport apart from rallying. I've got another friend of mine who's a massive massively into his endurance, loves Le Mans, loves everything about it, but also follows Formula One. But my other friend, when I told him, oh, the Indy 500's on, do you want to watch it? He was like, no, why do I want to watch it? And I thought, well, it's good racing. There's nothing wrong with IndyCar. <laughs> like, I, I enjoy watching it for the racing purposes. Now, with IndyCar, I, there's feels like something I can't really get on with, with it, and I don't know what it is. Maybe it's because I'm not really too familiar with the um, 
the tracks or the drivers can't really see where I'm going but yeah maybe okay. maybe it's that um, or something I don't know but I still enjoy it like if it's on I'll watch it obviously Col Colton Herter oh god is a driver I knew about even before they started talking about him joining you know Red Bull or Alpha Tower she would say and yeah I find that interesting and oh god something's gone wrong with the car it was very twitchy then but um yeah it I know F1 is titled there's a pinnacle motorsport but the reason why there's so many classes of motorsport because there's something for everyone and that's what I like about it with football it's just football and here in the UK football is seen as a very and we're talking soccer here not what you Americans call football soccer and oh god sugar see what football talk has interrupted my driving are we okay? I think we are okay let me just no, where's the buttons? There we go. I mean, I can't really see. But yeah, we're fine. Right, let's go. I don't think it's going to be as fast as the Ferrari. <laughs> but if you walk into a certain part of a certain city and wear a certain team's shirt, you will probably get shouted at. Or worse, beaten up. Or in some really horrific circumstances, which has happened, you know, guilt and that kind of attitude is creeping into F1 and I don't really like it and it's sad to see like you know you still got Hamilton and Verstappen fans still shouting at each other on social media and all the um, stuff said towards Red Bull after the Dutch Grand Prix it's just sad it's really sad you know, this is a motorsport. It doesn't affect your life unless you're the people behind the teams and the cars. Like, you should... Like, I fully expected Verstappen to have to, you know, get past Hamilton um, normally without the safety car. And I was finishing it. I was like, yeah, come on, bring on. This would be good racing. And it was good racing. I thoroughly enjoyed the Dutch Grand Prix, and when it was taken away, I was quite oh, no, that sucks. Oh well, you know. But I'm not shouting at bloody whoever. And it's just being really sad. And people laughing at Lewis for his accident at Spa. I'm just thinking, what are you doing? Like, like personally, he's not my favourite driver. Like. I don't follow him or whatever but you know I respect him as a driver his achievements are unlike any other and you know we've got to make the most of him because he won't be in Formula 1 for much longer and it just makes me sad people are still like this laughing at everything that he does like you can crack a joke every now and then but it just gets too far sometimes and just too much and yeah sometimes I feel sorry for the guy I give the man a break he's just a Formula 1 driver casually driving a car around ooh, super fast track at beyond 200 miles an hour like, do you want to do that? with 19 other drivers doing the same thing? no I didn't think so It's not like he's a bad driver either. Like all the hate towards Mazepin. Okay, yeah, I can understand. But with um, 
in Hamilton. It's like, is this seven time world champion? Only one other man has done that. And that is Michael Schumacher. And I don't see you laughing at him. So, yeah, it's, it's just... That kind of football attitude is creeping into Formula 1. I really don't like it. So when I went to Goodwood, I didn't want to wear my Red Bull shirt because I thought, well, if someone spots it, they might go, you're a snapping fan. It's just like, shut up. <laughs> yeah, that's my little rant over. I mean, it's good that I see people who like multiple forms or multiple logs. They're entertained. I mean, I would watch more stuff if I knew where to go for it. Like, a lot of the time I don't know where to watch it, if you get what I mean. Like, Formula 1, I know exactly where to go. Sky Sports, done. And, yeah, the rest I'm not too sure. Oh! Uh, Streetlights, do your job. <laughs> and, yeah, it's, um... Things need to change, and people just need to calm down. You know, it doesn't affect your life at all. Most people can't even afford to go to a Grand Prix. At least with football, it's still somewhat affordable for most people. But for football, oh god, <laughs> for a Formula One Grand Prix, yeah, I probably won't be going. Ever. <laughs> but yeah, that's my little rant over. What do you think? Do you think F1 fans in general are very much like that? Now, I don't know what it's like any of you viewers from the States. Is it kind of the same for you? Like, if someone said, oh, I'm a massive F1 fan, do people look at them going, you know, what's wrong with you? Why don't you like IndyCar? Because it's actually quite nice, like, if there's no F1 on the weekend, I'll put on IndyCar or whatever, then I go back to work and talk about IndyCar for a change. Especially now we've got the situation where in, going into the last race of the season, we still don't have a champion. Like, how exciting is that? <laughs> And yes, yeah, so I'll definitely be watching it at Laguna Seca. I think it's at Laguna Seca. Correct me if I'm wrong. Change gear. Thank you. Right, we nearly completed the lap. That's my little rant over. I'm going to concentrate now. I'm pretty sure we haven't. Well, I don't know actually. Remember, we're taking two and a half minutes away because it didn't count my. Um, well, it counted my time on the grid. Alright, full power, full send. Let's go. There we go. So it's a. Wow. <laughs> you don't see that often. I'm HAPPY. I'm HAPPY. Oops. 43 minutes dead. Which translates to. You know, 41 minutes and 30 seconds. Give me two seconds to have a look at what time the um, thing that Bob got. Ferrari. So we actually achieved a 39.23. So not bad, just a couple of minutes off, despite the fact we actually had a couple of um, non-disastrous crashes um, during that run, which probably did impact that time quite a bit. Probably could have taken a minute off. Um, and that's, well, that's a little bit annoying, but very, very close to the Ferrari. I didn't think we would beat it, but it's still a very respectable time. You know, 41 and a half minutes. That's really good for this car. And I'm actually relieved we actually made it round in one piece. And as it's pretty much dark now um, here in the mountains of Sicily. Well, guys, I really hope you enjoyed that. I did. It's nice to just sit down and just chat here. Um, also, I've recently purchased F1 Manager. Um, and I'm enjoying playing that game. Um, if you want me to do that on this channel, I'm thinking about it. Or maybe even live streaming it. Let me know in the comments or leave a like. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll look into that. 
Uh, but until next time, guys, that was the Tiger Floyd for GT40. I really hope you enjoyed. And uh, the next car that we take on this challenge is a little bit different, a little bit more powerful. But um, we'll see. And um, in between then, and um, well, now and then, uh, there'll be quite a few videos pumping out. I'm working this Sunday, well, this weekend. Um, so, but there will there should be a video for this weekend, and that'll be probably the season highlights video from season one of the historic F1 series, and a few other videos I've got planned as well, which should be very good. And uh, also look out for the announcement trailer for the season two. And until then, I'm gonna thank you once again for all the recent support on this channel. It's really really good to see. I really do appreciate it. And until the next video leave a like subscribe and check out some other videos as well that would be very much appreciated and uh, subscribe if you're new and until the next video i'll see you then see you later